Daddy, daddy, car is broken. Yeah. Well, welcome back to having fun repairs. Uh, my youngest son got a little shark motorized monster jam toy. Uh, let's see if there's a model number on this. Uh, controller has a model number of 66. 803TX. What about the actual toy itself? Uh, turn a light on. Here we go. Let's see. Model 66803RX. Transmitter, receiver, <clears throat> obviously. He was upset because. I can't really control the car anymore, so it turns on. It's always running in reverse. I'll tap the controller a little bit and it'll stop. Forward. Let go. Thinks it's got something to do with uh, actually remove the batteries. Cheapo Radio Shack screwdriver set versus my good one. See if it still does the same thing with the battery removed and turned on. And then we'll know definitively if it's an issue with the controller or remote control or the vehicle itself. No movement whatsoever. Okay. So that tells me the issue lies in here. There's your forward, reverse, left and right. I have a feeling maybe the plastics, cheap old plastics in this are broken or something but uh, yeah we'll tear it apart so, uh, let's take this apart and see what's going on inside of here Okay, <clears throat> initial inspection might have been that uh, you got a little plastic tab that gives it a little bit of uh, retention. Put it back in the position you want it in. Uh, that fits in a slot here. But I don't foresee I don't see any broken plastics. So go ahead and take both of these out. They're identical parts, so it doesn't matter if they get mixed up. Alright, so what do we have? Give me a couple seconds as I uh Get through the circuit board and try to write out the parts. Take a better look at it. So it's taken me several hours, but I think I have this thing uh, pretty well figured out. Now I 
left off several things. Um, in order to add, I put some flux down because I'm going to heat up these parts here in a minute. But let me show you what I've discovered so far. <clears throat> so you have your battery, positive and negative. That's over here. Uh, negative rails is fused. Uh, everywhere you see on this diagram here where the ground symbol is at, just realize that it's in reference to the negative side of this, uh, this battery. All right, so your positive three volts from your uh, two AAA batteries, 1.5 volts each, uh, comes into two uh, two pins on this uh, comparator right here. You have a uh, pin nine and pin 12. So it's 14 pin uh, IC. Your dots here, so one through seven this way, then eight through 14 this way. Pin nine is the second pin in the bottom row from the left right here. And pin 12 is this one right here. Uh, so your voltage in, these will be your VDD pins. Okay. Um, and I'll get more into what that voltage does here in a second, at least corresponding to your tactile switches, your buttons here. Um, <clears throat> now, on this circuit card, or excuse me, integrated circuit, I saw this value written on 1813CHT. I couldn't find anything about it online. Uh, what, what I believe this to be is a um, uh, basically a 2.4 gigahertz uh, RF modulator um, controller type circuit, uh, integrated circuit, uh, SOIC or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so what you have, uh, let's see, that's where the voltage came in. All right, antenna out, but I'll go over that for a second. That, your antenna out is over here on pin two. Uh, you have a series of uh, inductors and capacitors providing um, an RF choke, uh, keep noise suppression since you have voltage and you're generating an RF 2.4 gear signal. Uh, keep the keep your voltages from right off of that RF signal. You have ground here on pin one. Again, ground in reference to the negative terminal of the battery. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now, this right here is a crystal. This is a 16 megahertz uh, crystal. And you could also call it a reference oscillator. That feeds into pins 13 and 14. Okay. So what I believe occurs is you have 16 megahertz as a reference frequency. Uh, it's probably used to create stability of your 2.4 gigahertz signal that's being generated in here. Um, the output of that, you could call it, um, uh, well it wouldn't be an IF because this is a transmitting end, it's not the receiving end. Um, what, what would you call it? And definitely not an intermediate frequency. Uh, you just call it an oscillator, I guess. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a different term for it. I'm just not thinking of thinking about it off the top of my head. But anyways, um, this would be a reference oscillator. I think what occurs, so before I, I start talking about that more, remember the remote control transmits a 2.4 gigahertz signal out. All right, so you got the... Uh, three volts coming into pin 9 and pin 12, like I said. And then you have your switches, S1, uh, S4, S3, S6. Uh, S2 is not populated. Your switches are each tied to a pin on here. So uh, S3 here goes to pin 11. Uh, S6 goes to pin 10, uh, S4 goes to pin 7, and S1 goes to pin uh, 6. 
Again, S2 is not populated, but if it was, it would be here on pin 8. So, everywhere this lead comes from this IC here, you should see that 3 volt signal, okay? Um, if you look at the orientation on these buttons, uh, these two sides you'll have continuity, that's your, your ground plane, and then this is where that voltage will be, that voltage plane. So I have continuity between these pins, and I tested in continuity between these pins, but I would not have continuity across until the button is depressed, until the switch is depressed. So I believe what happens is you have the um, positive 3 volts v VDC feeding into each one of these buttons, and when it's de depressed, you send out voltage to ground. What I think occurs is inside of here, um, is this shifts your frequency at 2.4 gigahertz out, uh, probably by that 16 megahertz value. So it could be, say, one button could be 2.4 gigahertz plus 16 um, megahertz. The other one could be 2.4 gigahertz minus 16 megahertz. And then left and right could be fed to prob probably a doubler in here, so it could be 16 times 2, uh, what is that, 32. So 2.4 plus 32 and 2.4 minus 32, as pre previously stated, just underneath the doubler. Um, <clears throat> and then that's transmitted out, and the receiving end, the actual uh, vehicle uh, detects, picks up on that frequency, uh, identifies what the frequency is shifted to, and makes a corresponding change. Now. <clears throat> There are some pins that are not used on here. Uh, you see pin 5, 4, and 3. Go to this J1 connector here. Uh, pin 5 on the IC goes to there. Pin 3 uh, goes to here. Pin 5, pin 3. And then, uh, excuse me, pin 5 to here, pin 4 to here. Pin 3 goes to here. These two are connected to ground. So uh, I believe this is programmable. Um, more than likely, these could either be like an off board uh, tactile switch as well, like this, or maybe they're data pins. Uh, this one itself leads to where a transistor and some resistors would go. So, maybe feeding an LED or possibly like a master reset to reset this, uh, this um, uh, IC here after it's programmed. Uh, again, I'm, I'm taking a big guess about this. I, I could be completely off, but this is, this is what, I'm, what I'm guessing at. Well, <clears throat> so what were the, the discoverables after tracing this thing out? Put my bat put those batteries in. Zoom out for a second. Pin eleven goes to switch uh, switch S three. And when I depress the switch, you'll see that voltage drops down to zero. And then I let go, it goes back up to three. So we have that same condition existing on pins 10 and pin 11. There's pin 10, there goes pin 11. And then S1 feeds, that's the forward to make the, the uh, RC remote control uh, car go forward. That goes to pin six. We got three volts. Now look at here at pin uh, seven, which goes to my reverse. And I'm getting a low voltage. I'm only getting one volt. When I press it, it still goes down to zero, but I'm only getting one volt. That could be 
potentially because of two reasons. Either this IC here is bad, or maybe, even though under continuity tests, this, this switch tested good, maybe it's still conducting just a little. Maybe there's something putting a load in the switch, putting a load on that voltage to draw it down. And because it's close to zero, uh, definitely less than uh, three volts, um, maybe whatever is sensing that voltage drop in here is um, modulating or frequency sh uh, shifting at 2.4 gigahertz out to tell the uh, RC uh, remote control car to always be in reverse. There's an easy way of testing this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is remove this switch. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this switch. Uh, for, my kids are getting excited over a TV show. Uh, to see that three, if it comes back up to three volts, if it does, that means that the switch is bad. If it doesn't, that means that this pin is bad. Now I do have, or this IC is bad. Uh, I do have an idea of potential way that might correct, we, we might be able to correct this, but I'm not sure as to the longevity of that, of the alternate method of repair I'm thinking about. Uh, whether or not it will work or uh, yeah, there's too many hanging questions. My it'll be it'll be a trial and error kind of thing. Anyways, so first things first. Pop these batteries back out. And uh, get my soldering iron heated up. And we'll start, uh, we'll remove this part right here. Now, before I remove this, I, I put flux down on here. I just want to touch up these pins real quick. Just in case that there's a loose connector, you see that voltage comes back. Batteries back in. And let's make sure that those voltages are still there on all the pins that should be. So pin 8, even though it's not connected, 3.1. Pin 9 should be 3.1. Pin 10, 3.1. 10, 11, 3.1. And 7, do we have 3.1 now? No, we're still only getting that 1 volt. Pin 6, 3.1. Alright. And that pin is our ground. Alright, so next thing we'll do is remove this switch, this uh, S4 switch. Alright, let's go to remove the switch here.
Okay. We've gotten that pin off. Uh, excuse me, that switch off. Uh, oh, no. Did it with the battery still on. That's not good. Uh, we'll check the voltages one more time. Still three volts there. Three volts. Three volts. Three volts. Three volts. All right. Three volts here. Here's the pin I was concerned about. And we've got three volts back now with that pin out. So that's good. That means that the issue. Means that the issue was with this little uh, switch here. Now, if you see that, it tests perfectly fine. Even now circuit, no continuity across. But there's still something not right in here that's loading down that three volts. coming out of that pin. Make sure our ground is still good. ground is still good so suppose what we'll do is I'll see if I can find a different button somewhere to put in its place. Before I look at a replacement, what I'm going to do is clean this thing up a bit with some alcohol and some electronic contact in there. I'll just see if that will make any difference to this operation. Alright, I'm going to throw that back in circuit real quick, see if it made a difference. Probably not. But it's at least worth testing.
front side only should be good enough. finish soldering that down. Voltage still remains. Still getting 3.1. 3.1. 3.1. 3.1. Clean up the circuit board and then we'll try it out with the remote control car again. Go, moment of truth. Automatically going. Oh, there goes the wake up. Forward. Reverse. Right. Left. Nice. 
It seems to be working just fine. I think we got a winner. Is it working again, Ollie? Yeah, does it go forward and backwards for you? Hey! High five! Alright. If you enjoyed this video and found it a little informative or maybe learned something, then please give it a thumbs up. Like, subscribe, share. Um, of course, none of that required. So hopefully you, you enjoyed uh, this little short repair video. Uh, take care now. Bye-bye.